So more depressing news for you. Uh, we've been tracking closely, of course, where Democrats are with this um, $3.5 trillion proposed reconciliation bill. You'll recall a lot of uh, progressive priorities in here, but also things that are supported by a lot of people bipartisan on a bipartisan basis in this package. Things like universal pre-K, things like universal community college, paid family leave, um, elder care, expanding Medicare. There's there's a lot of things in here that, you know, have, have broad bipartisan support. So, of course, the big fly in the ointment has been Joe Manchin, who keeps coming out and posturing and saying he's not going to support anything like three and a half trillion. Here's his latest contribution to the conversation. The leader, Chuck Schumer, says he's moving, quote, full speed ahead with this package. Will he have your vote? And that's fine. He can. He will not have my vote on 3.5. And Chuck knows that. And we've talked about this. Um, we've already put out 5.4 trillion. And we've tried to help Americans in every way we possibly can. And a lot of the help that we put out there is still there. And it's going to run clear until next year, 2022. What's the urgency? What's the urgency that we have? It's not now, I've, I should say, Manchin is the most vocal because it's the most politically beneficial for him to mm-hmm. be vocal, but he is not the only Democrat. Oh, a lot of them feel this way. Um, right. Especially on some of the tax increases. I'm going to get to the latest um, revelations on what they're planning on doing with regards to taxes in a minute. But this is developing into a bit of a war of words and posturing between Manchin and Bernie Sanders, who really crafted— this bill. He's, of course, chair of the um, Senate Budget Committee and put a lot of these provisions together and has been one of the uh, front men in terms of pushing this forward. Let's take a listen to his response to Joe Manchin. First, your colleague, Joe Manchin, just explicitly told me repeatedly he will not support your $3.5 trillion reconciliation bill. He wants to see something more in the ballpark of $1.5 trillion. Is that acceptable to you? No, it's absolutely not acceptable to me. I don't think it's acceptable to the president, to the American people, or to the overwhelming majority of the people in the Democratic caucus. Look. So, look, Bernie feels like they already compromised going from $6 trillion to $3.5 trillion. The big question is, is Manchin, you know, really going to dig in his heels here, or is he posturing for what he thinks are his, you know, political interests back home and is ultimately going to yield and give them something that'll be acceptable. I, I kind of do think he's going to dig their heels in, Crystal. I, and, oh, another thing is that he, remember, Josh Gottheimer, one of the things that the moderates so-called got was a d- deadline to vote by mm-hmm. the end of September. September. And in that same interview, Manchin said, absolutely not. It's not, no way. And for I asked around, there's not enough Senate time in order to make sure that happened. They are back this week, so we'll probably have more news um, on that. But then they're out of session again. So we got to remember that all of this is about a drag out game and what the mansion cinema moderate types want they want that bipartisan infrastructure bill to pass Mm -hmm. but they do not want to vote for this bill Mm -hmm. and so they are doing everything in their power in order to make it so that eventually pelosi and everybody else compromise and goes okay fine we'll just pass this bipartisan bill so this actually really does put the ball in aoc and the progressives court as well as bernie are they actually gonna hold up hard line I, I, so, I mean, you, you should tell me because I actually don't know. At the end of the day, I do think that Manchin and Cinema actually are digging in their heels because when they say $3.5 trillion is not acceptable, it's not the spending. It's that they don't want to also increase the taxes. Right. So they're like, well, I could if it was all paid for. But you come to the pay-fors, they're not for them like right. whatsoever. That's the issue. So in terms of the taxes that they're actually cool with, we are talking about about a trillion, about one trillion, 1.5 trillion that they're saying that they would be okay with. So that being said, given they've drawn one hard line and they've also done the other on the taxes, the ball really is in Bernie and then the four progressives in the House. Are you actually going to vote down the bill, which would, frankly, guarantee zero infrastructure package because then the bipartisan one would also pass fail. either. Yeah, yeah. because um, while the bipartisan infrastructure bill had a lot of Republican support in the Senate, yes. that support has melted away. Exactly. Um, so you're talking about you may get like eight to ten Republicans who vote with you in the House, which means if you have a group, a block of a similar block of progressives who are willing to vote no, then you're able to kill the whole thing. You're able to actually have leverage mm-hmm. in this process. Now they say, uh, and I talked to Rokana recently, they say the entire progressive caucus has committed to voting no. We'll see. But right. where this gets <laughs> squishy, very squishy fast, yeah. is 
they haven't explicitly defined what their red line is. Um, and what Ro kind of said is that they're really kind of looking to Bernie for guidance on that. Now, even that is like, I'm sure Ro and some others may be looking to Bernie and the rest mm-hmm. of the Progressive Caucus, who knows? But that's where it starts to get squishy is their line has been no climate, no deal. Well, what does that mean, right? What are you willing to actually accept? Is it a dollar value? Is it like if it's below $2 trillion, we're voting no? Is it we have to have these specific climate fr- provisions or we're voting no? They won't say So that's the real question. I do want to say, I mean, AOC and others have been extremely consistent. They've been very clear. They've been very consistent. We are voting no on infrastructure unless we get a sizable reconciliation package, no climate, no deal. We'll see. It's very, very revealing the way that Manchin and others go after this bill because they don't ever attack any of the specific provisions because each specific provision is very popular, Mm -hmm. right? Who's going to oppose universal pre-K, like kids getting to go to preschool? They don't want to oppose the actual, what's popular in it, the pre-K, community college, expanding Medicare, like things that are popular and also really important in a state like West Virginia. They're taking the exact same tactic that that oil lobbyist laid out and said that they would take, which is they're going to attack the pay-fors and they're going to attack the overall price tag without getting into the details. Now, on the pay-fors, we actually have some news on this front that came out. Uh, Jeff Stein and one of his colleagues at the Washington Post got this from the Democrats on the House Ways and Means Committee. Um, So they're the ones who who have to kind of like figure out what the tax increases are actually going to look like. So they're out with a new proposal this morning that would increase the corporate rate to 26.5%. That's less than Biden had originally proposed. However, they're also layering on a 3% surtax on those who are earning $5 million plus. Um, The capital gains would also change to uh, increase into 25%, which is, again, lower than what Biden ultimately proposed. But with this basket of tax changes, plus greater enforcement, plus dynamic scoring, plus some other sort of like gimmicky things, they're saying that they're getting to that $3.5 trillion line. We'll see what Manchin, Cinema et al. respond to this um, new modified proposal right. in terms of the tax increases. Yeah, I'm, uh, I will be shocked if Joe Manchin goes for a 10% bump on the capital gains tax rate. That would be, I mean, that would be shocking, you know. I and mean, it just shows you who he's serving. Yeah. How many West Virginians yeah. <laughs> of his constituents are really worried about well, his daughter, capital gains his tax rate. His $40 million dollar daughter. Yeah, that's, they're that's all in the his family. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> they're yeah, well, all in his They're family. all his relatives. The ones who live there, look, we'll see. And his social circle, let's yeah. be fair. This increasingly is becoming an absolute boondoggle, and I am convinced that it is Obamacare 2.0. Even with the uh, popular provisions within, oh, actually, this is the other thing. Joe Manchin actually attacked the child tax credit in that same interview. He wants to means test it. That's right. I don't know if you saw that, but then that comes to the question, are the progressives willing to say, like, okay, we'll take the climate provision if you take out the child tax credit? So it's like, there's a lot of bargaining power, James Clyburn already out being like, all right, maybe not 1.5, but how about two, right? So the the bargaining that is all happening behind the scenes, I am convinced that eventually something will probably pass. It will be a morass. It will be cobbled together. Individual provisions of it will fulfill democratic objectives, but the messaging on it will be just such a cluster that it won't, it will not give the bump that well, Biden Well, I don't even really this. care about the politics yeah. of it at this point. I care about, like, the substance of it, you know, and because, uh, uh, you know, I think Democrats are pretty much right. for the midterms. Anyways. Anyway, so now's the time to go big or go home because this is it. I mean, that's really— This is it in terms of the Biden administration and a legacy and changing, you know, the the direction and what is possible in reality for working class people. This is the chance right now. And, uh, you know, I've I've pressed, uh, I pressed Roe. I also Mm -hmm. pressed, we had Faz Shakir on, Crystal Kyle and Friends, who is still an advisor to Bernie. Mm -hmm. So he's sort of privy to some of these conversations. And he claims that behind the scenes, the Biden people are playing a little more hardball than we're seeing up front, but who knows? Who knows? We'll see where this goes. We'll see how much is posturing from Manchin um, and how much is reality, but I do think you're right. Certainly any hope of getting the full $3.5 trillion package is definitely dashed. 
I if they get something that's in the two trillion dollar range, I think that would be a real stretch and a real win at this I th- point. I think you're right. So we'll see. It's going the way of Obamacare, some December thirty first vote or something like that. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.